I was a runner on PT. It was my first proper job. I became Dorothy Hammerman's assistant. But the job stayed pretty much the same. I let me to do it for a year, but I just couldn't leave. It was like a family. Until it wasn't. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure regular viewers will have noticed there's been something a little different about tonight's show. Normally on this show we have celebrities, politicians, people you've heard of that you know. Tonight's guests were not celebrities. They were people like you. Every one of you is a novel written by your own hard times. I've done a few things over the years where I can to help folks out. I've opened my checkbook from time to time, certainly, and I've tried to open my heart. But the thing is, ladies and gents, it's not enough. And it never will be. Not sat here doing this. You might remember a few months ago when I had an impressive barrister here called Julia Salisbury. We talked about standing up to society's bullies. She inspired me, actually, and we stayed in touch. And we've talked a lot. And we've concluded that there is only one way to help the sheer number of people we both aspire to. So, the programme you've just watched was the last ever episode of Peter. I'm sorry, that must be a shock. We've known it here for a few weeks now, but we didn't want to fuss or a star-studded final special episode. Just ordinary people. The people who need to advance. You'll be hearing that word a lot over the coming year. And you'll be seeing me out and about, and I hope you'll all come and say hello and tell me what I can do for you. Because over the last almost seven years, You've all done so very much for me. Dotty, get out here before I start welling up. <laughs> this is Dorothy Hammerman, a woman who, despite never appearing on this show until now, has somehow managed to become a household name. Absolutely. I'd never do anything as desperate as booking myself onto your show. It's not my show. It's yours. But it's got your name on it. It's ours. Okay, it's ours. Dorothy's off to take all the lessons that she's learnt here to shake up one of our rivals who I am not going to give a free advert to. Well, I will. It's three. <laughs> As channel controller, Dorothy will be the most powerful woman in television. It'll still be a damn sight easier than putting up with your nonsense. <laughs> Dorothy Hammerman, everybody. <laughs> well, I guess that's it. Over the last few years, I've poured my heart and my soul into this thing. Really, I have. And I've worked to the point of collapse on far, far too many occasions. I've tried to be honest about everything as I see it. Maybe you've learned something. Maybe you've felt something. Maybe you've laughed along the way, or maybe just, maybe all three. My name is Peter Clement, and I want to thank all of you who have stuck with me to these last words. I couldn't love you more. Thank you. Good night. Dorothy, Miss Hammerman, had somehow managed to book a very special guest as a birthday present for Peter. He'd been due to appear on Just the Job during his second run in the 70s, but had dropped out due to last minute advice from his agent. He'd been in a successful pop band back then, The Socialites, but had since received a calling to ministry and became a rising star in church circles instead. 
Peter's always been a fan of his and the socialites. So he'd always regretted not meeting him. It was supposed to just be an interview. But an hour before the show, Peter and Dorothy came giggling in like school children and I got sent off to buy a large bottle of vodka. Strong one as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the youngest Archbishop in the history of the church, the Archbishop of Pendleshire, Richard Cockley. <laughs> now then, Archbishop, a few years ago when you were a pop star... Nah, my misspent youth. <laughs> oh, nonsense. We all love the socialites, don't we, everybody? Yeah. Really? You're too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> anyway, back then, you agreed to go on just the job to do a little thing called I'll Drink to That. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes, I saw the first two and I remember feeling very strongly this was something that might come back to haunt me. Well, you're not wrong about that. Play the jiggle! Uh, the second you do Right, Archbishop, it's a very simple game. I'm going to read out a series of statements to you. If you agree with them, you shout out, I'll drink to that, and you down one of these glasses of holy vodka that we've laid out for you. You know, I've not seen an array like this since the socialites played in San Palmarino. <laughs> <laughs> now, for legal reasons, can you confirm that you're doing this of your own free will and that we're not blackmailing you or coercing you in any way? Not coercing, no, more like ambushing, but I've never been able to turn down a challenge, and after all, our good Lord even enjoyed a tipple from time to time. The church isn't all jumble sales and child abuse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play! <laughs> Cats are better than dogs. That clearly have not met my poodle Beelzebub. Aww. Nope. <laughs> all right. Coffee is better than tea. That, that's clearly heresy. <laughs> we will get you. <laughs> Billy Bob Jean... Ch you know what that is, do you? I'm actually rather fond of country music these days. But gosh, that's broken a few hearts amongst our old fans, I'd imagine. <laughs> Billy Bob Jean Short's hit song, Do What I Say or Go Back to the Basement, is better than Graham Bannon's classic hit from the 50s, If You Won't Be My Lady, Lady. Better than Graham Bannon. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> I can't believe you actually took it. <laughs> End of the game. Why fronts are better than boxer shorts? I'll drink to that. Fantastic. We're well, learning a lot here. Mm. <laughs> a bacon sandwich is better than fish and chips. Oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, sauce on the sandwich. If you like. I'll drink to that. Girls are better than boys. Mm. Bloody drink to that. Language, <laughs> Archbishop. <laughs> Charity is better than thrift. Nah, that's a bit theosophic. Theos <laughs> that's that's a bit deep. <laughs> These shots are straight to my head, you know. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> we honestly thought that you were going to be sober at this point. Well, you can take the boy out of the socialites, but you can't take the archbishop out of the boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, um... No, wait, that doesn't sound. God is better than all of us. Of course he is. He's fucking great! Well, I'll drink to that! I'll drink to that! <laughs> oh. <clears throat> you have a bucket somewhere. You'd think getting smashed on live television would have ruined the Archbishop's career. But it actually did the opposite. He's more popular than ever now. And of course he presents Hymns of Joy on free, which is the most watched religious television show in history. And all because of a few shots. They say God works in mysterious ways. In this case, it was through me and a dodgy off-license. Well, Peter never wanted Tim Hill on the show. He used to call him a ventriloquist who can't even be asked to throw his own voice. But he was hugely popular with the viewers, loved in the country. One morning, I had Dorothy and Peter absolutely screaming at each other in her office. Even with the door shut, you could hear the swear words. It actually wasn't uncommon. Peter and Dorothy, Miss Hammerman, had a very uh, direct relationship. Some of the crew said they had learned so many swear words they'd actually seen it as a bonus. <sighs> anyway, after ten minutes of effing and blinding, Peter storms out, he slams the door, and Tim Hill, he was on the show that very night. Our next guest, or should I say guest, is sure to be a bit of a handful. Expect the unexpected. From Tim Hill and Polly! <laughs> Oh, she's a bit protective. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Grab it, grab a chair. Oh. Sorry, I don't know what's oh. happened. There's normally a table here. Oh, don't worry about that. She likes it up close and personal. I bet she does. <laughs> oh, 
Ross Rumpole. She says you should apologise for casting aspersions on her character. Oh, right you are. Sorry, Polly. She says you should apologise with a kiss. <laughs> Careful, you thing you'll get me into trouble with Mrs. C. She says she's not afraid of Mrs. C. I can't say that. But I can't. Oh, yes, you can. She says she's got nicer legs than Mrs. C and Anita. Watch yourself, pal. I told you we wouldn't like it. Mrs. C is a very private person. I would thank you. I would thank you both. To leave her out of this. Got that, Paul? <laughs> Quiet, you lot. <laughs> she really is very sorry. <laughs> she just wants to be <laughs> Oh, for pity's sake. <laughs> oh, do you like that? Yeah, I can see she does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, take, take it easy there, Polly. But, he, hey, it's not me, it's her. She was, she must really like you. Yeah, yeah, watch it, watch it there, pal. Oh, hey, got it, got it. What's my the problem with Sterling? Hey, yes, that's my... No, stop, 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 stop. And we must have touched the nerve there. That's not the only bloody thing you've touched. What's that, pal? It better be a bloody apology. You can't just go I around touching people. That. What did she say? I can't. Oh, yes, you can. She says, if that's your J. Johnny Johnson, she feels sorry for Mrs. C! Right! <laughs> Obviously, we've had to drop the signal there, so viewers never got to see what happened next. But I can officially reveal, and this is an exclusive, that Tim Hill got a black eye and refused to work with Channel One again. Peter got an official reprimand from Bozeman and the higher-ups, and in his usual manner, just totally ignored it. <laughs> oh. And Polly, she got her head ripped off.